Hi, I'm Lori Campbell from Kern Learn, and I wanted to show you the process of converting a Google Classroom that you have already created into Canvas. So the cru crucial step in this is to make sure that you can provide permission for Canvas to access that Google Drive. As you see here, um, it becomes a registered service. So in order to allow that permission, all you have to do is come up into the account bar, go to your account and select settings. And that is where you will see this image. And if Google Drive is not already under registered services, it will be over here under other services. And then it's just a matter of clicking and it will ask as it normally does that prompts you, do you allow Google Drive to access, have access to Canvas and you allow it and that's it. Once that happens, now Google Drive becomes a repository for all of the files that can be uploaded easily into Canvas. The other thing you want to look at is the parallel structure of how these are organized. So when you're in Google Classroom, uh, you have the opportunity to make topics, questions, materials, and assignments. Uh, there's also quizzes there as well. Canvas, they call them slightly differently. So in Canvas, a topic is going to be a text header. The question is going to be a discussion. Material is going to be a page, but the assignments stay the same as well as the quizzes. These are your choices. So every time you create a page in your Canvas module, uh, you have all of these to choose from. The external URL and the external tools, these are if you are cooperating with other organizations or apps outside of Canvas, such as turnitin.com, it's going to be with an external tool. Uh, it, you could have uh, the social studies textbook. That would be an external URL. So if there are uh, programs that you have purchased or they, some of them are free, you can also use these two as well. The simplest way to do this is to go to your all courses and select plus course. And then you would want to title it with the subject matter and the school year and the semester in which this is going to be taught. We would also like for all Kern High School District uh, programs to be under the CC attribution share alike and then create the course. Now, since you have already created the Google Classroom, hopefully you've separated it into the different topics. And so you're going to select create a new module. And then it's just a matter of titling that module. But what you want to do is you want to have a creative numbering system so that this is actually what's going to guide your students through the system. It also helps if they have a question that they can come back to you and inbox message you and say, I'm not sure I understand the instructions in 1.2.1. That gives you a much better chance of helping them out than if you simply were to title it. This is also going to help with the grade book so that you can easily find assignments uh, and know exactly which one was taught at which point. So what I do is I make the first number the module that's in the course. So let's say I'm able to teach four modules in a course, so I'm going to have one, two, three, and four at the beginning. So this is the number of the module. The second number is basically the topic number. And so whatever topics you have created underneath that module title, that's the second number. And then the last number is the lesson in that series. So as you can see, this is what it's going to look like from converting from Google Classroom into Canvas. And so here is the module title and the topic preparing to read. I've changed it to getting ready to read. But basically all of these now become the same thing in Canvas. 
So what, let, let's go ahead and take a look at how this actually works within Google Classroom and Canvas. You will want to have both tabs open at the same time. So I am in, um, this is actually a module that I'm creating. And so this has already been created, of course. So I'm going to go to my dashboard and I'm going to create my new course. Clicking courses, all courses, plus course. Entitle it. and change the content license to attribution share like. And now I have my blank course. So I'm going to create a new module. And the first one is my Don't Panic Coping with Teen Anxiety module. So now the plus button is the equivalent of the create button. So all I need to do is click that. And if I go over to my Google Classroom, the first in my lesson series is about this module. So you can see that this is a materials tab. And so I'm actually going to select the page. And since this is the first module in the series, the first topic, and the first in the series, it will be 1.1.1. I'm still going to call it the same thing about this module. Now the indenting helps with organiza organization. Um, I think it's up to you how you want it to look for the students. It looks much cleaner if the topics are um, the farthest flushed left, and then you can indent from one level. So now I have the new materials page, and it's just simply a matter of taking the content from this page, and it might be a little easier to edit the material too. So I'm going to copy, right click, copy, and then I need to click the edit for Canvas. And within the content editing button, the editor, I paste. Now, I also have two resources here that are linked. The first one is the Data and Statistics Children's Mental Health. And so this is actually a link. And I can, in Canvas, actually create this link by simply making it hyperlinked through the content rich editor. So see where it says link to URL. All I need to do is copy and paste the URL. Insert link. There's also a cool little shortcut that you can do and I have to click outside of it first but if I select this again and didn't quite hit it that time Command K and actually, I only need to do part of this, but if I do Command K, notice that the URL is now up there. But if I go Target, New Window, OK, then what's going to happen is once I hit Save, all the student has to do is click on the link and notice that it opened a new tab so that the student does not lose his or her place in the lesson. Now I have one more resource for this page. So I'm going to go back to edit. And I have a graph. Now this graph is actually within my Google Drive. 
Uh, so it really doesn't matter where I get this from. This is the de depression graph JPEG. And notice that this is a Google drawing. Actually, I'm sorry, this is the PDF format. But it is in my Google Drive. So what I'm going to do is where I would like to put this, I am actually going to put this here. And the only drawback at this point is that the files do not link up to the Google Drive immediately for teachers. It would be nice, but unfortunately that does not happen. So what I'm going to do is download that file. I have to remember what it was, depression graph. But I can go to my Google Drive, and there it is. And I will simply download it. And now the JPEG is actually an image. So I click on image. I want to upload it. Now the Flickr images, um, they are actually the copyright free, but it's best if we provide our own that we have control over for our images. So I'm going to go to my downloads. There's the depression graph and open. And what I want to do, because this is an accessibility issue, if there is a student who is uh, having vision problems, they can have the screen read to them the content. And so when it gets there, it's going to tell them depression graph. So I don't want this to be a de decorative image. In fact, it's recommended that you don't have too many of these decorative images. Um, it, it just kind of, clutters things for the student. Then I'm going to upload. And now the text, the graph is fully embedded within the text of the lesson. So as you can see, this looks better from the perspective in Canvas than it would in the stream for the student. Let's look at that comparison. So if the stream, uh, I have not published this yet, so it's not yet in the stream. So if I publish it, uh, it will appear, but they have to find it in the stream. They can also see it in the classwork, but um, it looks a lot easier in this view than it does in this one. Now, let's say that you want to put in an assignment. And this assignment has a TED Talk in it. And so I also have a rubric attached to this one. I'm going to edit the assignment again so that I can do the copying. Um, I could very easily if the numbering system is the same, just simply copy and you're going to go back to modules. And then the plus sign again. Now this is an actual assignment, but I'm going to make this 1.1.2. I'm not uh, going in order right now because I don't want to have to show you everything. It will take a lot of time, but I can simply just paste this and I'm ready to go. And add item. And then I click on it to edit. I come back to the text. Command, copy, edit, command, paste. And one of the cool things we can do as well is that if this is a YouTube video, I'm going to go back to my Google Classroom 
and I'm going to take the title of my video and copy it. So let me do this where it's a little bit easier. I'm just going to copy the title. And then I'm going to click YouTube, which is part of my content editor. And I can actually paste the title of the uh, video, hit enter, and there it is. And now the entire video becomes embedded into the lesson as well. At this point, I can then assign points. I can even decide what kind of an assignment this is. Since this is pretty early on, I'm going to make this a practice activity. And they're not worth as much. These are like 5% of the student's grade. So I'm going to add that group. Now the students do have to submit something. So I'm going to make the submission type online. And since this is a quick write, just a paragraph, I have a couple of different options. I can do a text entry, which is just going to give them the, the editing box that you saw previously, or a file upload. And this can actually be from a Google Doc if they create the Google Doc. I do have at this opportunity the uh, ability to put the due date down as to when this would be. And then I save it. And there it is. For the rubric, you have the ability to make your own rubrics, just as you now do in the Google Classroom. So if I have a rubric in this one, which I believe I do, and there it is. Now, unfortunately, we're not able to merge this over quite as clearly. And it does take some time to uh, make the new rubric in Canvas. But once this gets created, so in this case, this is a CER rubric, which the English teachers are very uh, familiar with. And so once I create it the first time in Canvas, all I have to do is find it and I can copy it over the same way I can in Google Classroom. Use this rubric. One of the other things I want to make sure I do is set it up so that I don't have to put the points in. So I'm going to edit this rubric down at the bottom. I am going to use this rubric for assignment grading and update. Now, I put in 10 points, but the rubric actually counts 15. So I'm just going to change that so now it's even, it's equal. And that's it. I would say that it may take as long as a day to get your course into Canvas. And it's a little clunky at first in order to do this. But like I said, once you get the hang of it, it goes very quickly. And I think you're going to find that your Google Classroom um, actually becomes much smoother in Canvas. And the best part about this is that when it's all done, you are actually able to share it to the Commons for other Kern High School District teachers to access and to use, whereas you couldn't before with a regular Google Classroom. So if you do have any questions about how to convert this, I will be happy to answer them. You just go ahead and email me here, and this slide will be attached to the video. So thank you very much for your attention. Good luck.